Hey everyone, and welcome to another uh, part of our tutorial series for Mario Clone. This is Chris, and uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, get started on the uh, next script that is uh, going to control the movement for our player. Um, we're not going to do any uh, like uh, gravity stuff yet. We're not going to get into collision detection. Uh, this is basically just to show you guys how to move the player back and forth on the screen. Um, so to do that, we are going to need to get into the player class. But before we write any code, let's go ahead and select the player and let's add this uh, player class to the player so that we don't forget to do that later and wonder why our player isn't moving. So let's go ahead and uh, open that up in Mono Develop. And um, as always, we've got, a, got an empty class. And uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to create some variables, OK? So one thing we're going to need uh, for for movement is we're going to need a uh, we're going to need a, a velocity for the player. So let's uh, let's assign a vector two because we also are going to want to use this for our y velocity for when we're jumping. So let's go ahead and create that and um, let's see what else are we going to need. We're going to need. Um, I'm going to need to create uh, some very simple states for uh, for input. So we're going to create one called walk and one called walk left, uh, walk right. And uh, let's go ahead and add in the one for jump. Um, the uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, create our uh, check player input method okay and let's go ahead and add a call to that and our update method okay All right so and uh, if you'll if you guys will remember uh, from the uh, Tetris clone uh, that we've made uh, we used input.get key for um, getting the uh, the player uh, inputs and we're gonna basically do the same thing here and uh, we're gonna need to assign these let's see here for simplicity we're going to um, create an input dot left bull input underscore left and uh, we're going to set that equal to the value of get key key code dot left arrow okay. do the same thing for right input right equals input uh, get key key code uh, right arrow and let's do the same thing for the jump uh, we're going to use the um, let's see the space input uh, get key down and key code uh, space okay. the reason that we're creating these bulls is just to make it a little simpler on us to uh, you know uh, get the uh, get the in or get the um, return values of these because you know we could we could just write this instead but uh, this is, is so much shorter and it'll equal the same thing every time the player inputs get checked <clears throat> So now we want to set our states based on our inputs, right? So we created a uh, walk boolean, and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to set walk equal to input left or input right. And uh, what that does is it uh, it checks to see if uh, input left is true or if input right is true, then walk is true. Okay? We're going to do the same thing for walk left. So. Here we're going to say if input left is true and not input right. So input right is not true, input left is true. That means that uh, walking left is true. We do the same thing for walk right. Close input, um, not input left. Meaning input left is not true and input right, input right is true, that means we're walking right. And then uh, for jump, uh, we're just gonna say um, input space. 
So jump is only true if the uh, spacebar is down. Uh, walk right is only true if uh, we're not pressing left, but we are pressing right. Walk left is only true if input that uh, if we're um, actually pressing left and not pressing right. And uh, walking is true if we're pressing left or pressing right. Okay. So that is the player input. So in order for us to do anything with these input values, we are going to need to um, create another method and uh, we're going to call this one update player position. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and call that from the update method. All right, so to, uh, <clears throat> to move our player, first we wanna check if the, uh, the walk boolean is true, because if it's not, then uh, we don't want our player to walk at all. Um, if that is true, we want to see if walk left is true because if walk left is true then we want our player to walk left of course um, and if walk right is true then we'll want our player to walk right very simple right <clears throat> so uh, to do any of this stuff uh, we should probably create some reference variables uh, so that we don't have to constantly get our transforms position um, so what we'll do is we'll create a vector three for the uh, position. And we are going to get our local position, not rotation. And uh, basically on every time this is called, uh, this position variable is updated with uh, the transform or the local position of the transform. And the transform is the player uh, because the script is attached directly to the player. And um, Another one we'll want to get is the, uh, the actual scale of the player. Um, let me explain that for a minute. If you've uh, I'll, I guess the best way is to actually show you. Um, so in Unity, if you look at the player, um, he's actually facing the right. And if you look at his X scale, it's set to 1. Now, the uh, Instead of creating a whole another graphic that shows the player facing to the left, we can actually flip him on his X scale by uh, simply changing his value on the X scale to negative one. See, now he's facing left. We're going to use this uh, to actually flip our player back and forth depending on which direction he's walking in. So in our player script, we actually get his, um, his local scale, okay? We set that equal to scale. And then as we're walking left, okay, we have to um, change the uh, X position. We're going to decrement it by the uh, velocity that we've set in the inspector, dot X. We're going to multiply that by time, dot delta time. And then we're going to set our scale dot X equal to negative one because we're walking left and we want our player to face left. Uh, for the uh, walk right, we're going to do exactly the opposite. So we're going to position.x, I'm going to increment by velocity dot x times time dot delta time. And then uh, we're going to set scale.x equal to 1. All right. So right now all we're doing is we're updating the, uh, the reference variables. So these are actually um, the, uh, the transforms that need to be updated yet. So we actually have to update those. So we'll do that at the end of our, um, at the end of our update player position method. We'll uh, set the uh, transform dot position, or local position, equal to our position. And the transform dot local scale equal to scale. All right. So this uh, really should be all there is to it to actually get the player to move left and right. Keep in mind that uh, there's nothing affecting the player's gravity yet. So he's not being pulled down from where he's at. 
Um, he can walk left and right. There are no collision detections. So um, he can continue to walk through the walls and through the pipes and everything else. Uh, there's no jumping, so he won't be able to jump. But uh, basically, this is uh, he'll be able to move left and right. And um, we actually, what we need to do is, yeah, we didn't set a default value for velocity. So we'll open up Unity and uh, click on the player. Preserve velocity. And uh, let's go ahead and set this to 7. And uh, let's click play and see what happens. We should be able to control our player. Yep. There we go. But there seems to be a problem. The camera isn't following. But you guys know why it's not following the player? It's because we never assigned the player to the camera. <laughs> so let's stop that for a quick second. Um, come back over to our camera. And here's our camera follow script. And did we, we didn't save. So save our camera follow script. Go back to Unity. And there's an error. Oh yeah, um, we can't assign a vector 3.0 value to a float. Um, our smooth damp velocity was supposed to be a vector 3 type. Okay, so now we've got our uh, camera follow script saved. Um, in Unity. And got another problem here. Nice. And we can't only pass it smooth damp velocity because we want smooth damp velocity at x. So that should take care of all the problems. There. Clear out jump is assigned but is never used. Um, that's fine because we're not using it yet. So let's go to our camera now. And uh, you'll see we have uh, nothing for our target, nothing for left bounds, nothing for right bounds. So for the target, of course, we want the uh, player. And for left bounds, we will use our left bounds, which is this one. Let's go ahead and rename these so that we know which one's which. So left bounds, right bounds. Go ahead and click back over to our main camera. Dragging the left bounds. Dragging the right bounds. Okay, so now uh, let's click play. And now you'll notice that the camera is following the player just like it should. Walk through everything, pipes, castle, all the way to the end of the game. Good thing is our camera stays exactly where it's supposed to at the end of the screen. And uh, should also not move past the minimum value. Yep, here we go. So our player is moving, he's turning around like he should. Everything's working great. So we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude it here. Guys, stay tuned for the uh, next part of the series, and I will see you soon.